For 20 years, Steve Laura Judd was a hard-nosed, no-nonsense cop on the beat. But he carried a secret, one that was unbelievably difficult for a man of his time and his position to share. But now, three or four years later, he has, with the support of his employer, the New Zealand Police, his colleagues, and a healthy shift in public attitude. Simon Mercer with Steve's story and others like him. What kind of license have you got? I, I found life really quite difficult. I made a conscious decision that that would be a secret that I would uh, keep for my life and take to my grave. Just a cop doing her job. That's how Constable Sarah Lurajud wants to be seen. Gold. Okay, cheers. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye-bye. But for most of Sarah's 24 years of the New Zealand police, she says she was living a lie. Well, I'm basically a transsexual. I ended up basically uh, having um, a female gender brain uh, and a male body. And um, it's a tendency to make life rather complicated. <laughs> How do people near you deal with that? Like when you had to tell, or talk to your wife about this sort of thing, how, how does that all play out? Can we cut there? There are parts of her life she won't discuss because before becoming Sarah in 2004, she was this man, Steve, a no-nonsense cop. They get away with so much that they start to think that they're uh, pretty invincible. invincible. Yes. I guess and, uh, I basically uh, tried to uh, present uh, myself as being very much a, a man's man. Um, um, fairly, fairly tough, I guess. Macho? Yes. Not emotional? No, no, no. It was, it, it was really... I, 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 yes, it was, it was simply about being um, uh, fairly staunch, I guess. And why did you want to portray that image? Because I was hiding. <laughs> Sarah, or Steve as she was then, was, was well known in the police. She actually um, joined the police just before me. Back um, then, Sarah's boss, Derek Erasmus, only knew Steve as one of his bravest cops. A cop recognised for saving a pensioner from a burning house. She was well known as a, a good hard cop on the front line who never shirked from duty. But what Sarah had tried to avoid was facing up to who she really was. I felt through all of my life I could never really completely um, be myself. I, 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 I always felt that I was living in the wrong world. Sarah Lurigit isn't the first transsexual to hit the spotlight, of course. Decades ago, there was Carmen. And later, MP Georgina Byer. But you might not have heard of Joanne Clark. This is Joanne in 1984. She's been a transsexual campaigner for decades. But the law is, is wrong. Um, they won't legally give us sex changes over here because they consider it wrong. And this and is now. People are always afraid of something they don't understand. We're pretty normal people, actually, that it's just, you know, that our brain doesn't match our body and that, so we've, we've done something to, to alter that. Way back, Joanne was Alan, but she was never going to be a normal Kiwi boy. I was bullied from the first day at school, right through to my, to my last day. And at one stage, I was the tallest and the heaviest in school, and I was still bullied by everybody, yeah, including some of the teachers. In her late teens, Joanne took female hormones and had sex change surgery. She's lived as a woman ever since. What I've discovered is that you get more accepted when people actually get to understand you a bit more. What I have endeavoured to do, along with others, um, is actually be out so people can actually find out. Fashion show registrations are out on the front desk. And to help people find out, Sunday's cameras were invited here to transsexual support group Agenda's annual conference. Joanne was there and Sarah Lurigid part of a police liaison team working with the transgender and gay community. There's been a lot of changes made, I assure you. <laughs> also there, Jack Byrne. I was born in a female body, 
but that never totally f fitted for me. And eventually it got to the stage where it didn't fit at all. Jack is now a researcher for the Human Rights Commission, and once he was a female. Hello. Hello. First of all, you need to get on the hormones to, you know, help with the voice, get facial hair, get body hair, lose head hair, um, you know, get more muscles and your, and your body shape changes. As a female actor, Jack would perform male roles, strapping his chest to flatten his breasts. But he liked to keep the straps on, stay as a man. That was kind of unusual. Jack's partner, you know, Rebecca, isn't at all concerned Jack's yeah. changed his body. I think it's really important to have that context of being in relationship with other people instead of sort of the stereotype of the, the lone, depressed, you know, people who um, don't have healthy relationships because it's completely not true. Jack wanted to be a man physically. That meant surgery to remove his breasts. It's hard to explain what it felt like to finally have a bare chest, but it was... Like, the first time Bex could put her head on my chest was amazing. But making a full transition to a man is difficult. You know, what guy doesn't want a penis? But there isn't the technology to create something really good right now. It's much more expensive, about $100,000, and it can't be done in New Zealand. So people go overseas for it. Sarah also went overseas to become, legally, a female. I've now transitioned. I'm um, a female police officer. I've gone through um, an immense amount of uh, surgery and procedures to um, physically uh, reach that point. Um, Nobody would ever choose this as a lifestyle. Um, being um, gender dysphoric, being transsexual, um, is really hard. What's the story with your warrant? Up next, we're back on the front line with Constable Sarah Laraja. What did the police make of a male officer becoming a female? To be suddenly confronted by um, Sarah as opposed to Steve would be a shock to anyone. Um, it was a shock to me. That's after the break. Constable Sarah Lurajud is New Zealand's first openly transsexual police officer. The police, the fire service and the armed services have a higher uh, proportion of uh, transgendered people in their ranks than any other occupation. And that's because um, people of my ilk have a tendency to go to those places to hide. For Sarah, years of hiding is this man, Steve, a macho cop, took its toll. I spent a lifetime living a lie. Uh, I just simply um, ended up uh, wearing out. I, 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 had a, um, I had a breakdown. In the end, there was no choice. Sarah had to be Sarah, whatever the cost. Uh, I was petrified uh, of the prospect of losing my job. I, d I had no idea um, how the department or my colleagues would react. And, um, and I was. I, was I, I didn't want to lose my job. How did you try to put it to them to make them understand? Um, oh, it's just a nightmare, really. <laughs> I'm pleased. I, I'm. <laughs> I'm pleased that part of it's all over. Yeah, it was. Re look, it was really difficult. I think those who knew Sarah for the 24, 25 odd years that she has been in the police, to be suddenly confronted by um, Sarah as opposed to Steve would be a shock to anyone. Um, it was a shock to me. For Sarah's boss, Derek Erasmus, and the police, this was new territory. However, um, Sarah is a valued employee. We knew that we had to make the environment as safe as possible for her, and we didn't want her to leave. To your knowledge, how much ribbing, teasing, abuse was she subjected to within the force? I suspect if she received any abuse um, face on, um, the person would know about it. Um, Sarah is never one to uh, take a step back. She's no shrinking violet. Hi, hi. But what about out on the street? We have had comments from members of the public about who this person was who dealt with them, but they're probably more a reflection of people's own beliefs and possibly prejudices. 
I, I was subjected to, um, um, you know, cruel and uh, inappropriate comments, and uh, emotionally that was very hard on me. But I've always been a person that um, has had the belief that the only way forward is through. This was a good cop. Sarah was a good cop and is a good cop. I've always been incredibly proud to be a police officer. I'm proud of my service. I'm proud of the organisation that I represent. And I'm um, incredibly uh, proud of the way the department handled um, my particular situation. And just as Sarah's working in the community, so are other transsexuals, who are also happy to say so. Well, I live in a small township. Um, I work on a golf course with lots and lots of members and 99% of them are absolutely perfect with it. I flew helicopters for 15 years uh, all over Papua New Guinea, Australia and New Zealand. Taxi driver, bus driver, truck driver, farmer and now uh, storeman and produce market in Christchurch. You can do whatever you want and there's actually people that have done it before you that have actually laid all that groundwork, that have, that have been punched in the street and, and spat on and, and attacked and whatever. You know, and they've, they've, taken, they've taken the hard knocks for them so that they won't have to deal with that. But some battles are still to be won. It's about legal recognition. You'll recall Jack and his partner Rebecca. Jack was born in a female body, but has taken the hormones, had the chest surgery. He sees himself as a man, so does Rebecca, but the law doesn't. I can't get a male birth certificate because I haven't had all surgeries. I totally support him in going through that process of being able to have the documents match, you know, who he is. If I can't have a male birth certificate, I can't marry Bex. They want to tie the knot next year, but can't do it as husband and wife. I don't want, you know, what should be one of the happiest days of your life to be this reminder that, you know, the state doesn't see me as who I am. I live fully and permanently as a guy. To be able to be recognised as a guy is huge. It's a key issue for transsexuals, one taken up by the Human Rights Commission. This year, the Commission put out this, to be who I am. What it says is the world's first report into discrimination against a transgender community. The Commission heard from some 200 trans people from all over New Zealand, and most did report discrimination, bullying, beating at home, school and work. The Commission says more awareness is needed and more needs doing to improve the legal status of trans men and women. Brooks, thank you. And that, transsexuals say, is where people like Sarah Lurajud come in. How important is Sarah's example, do you think? Uh, Sarah's example is hugely important as someone that's in the public eye, at ground zero basically, you know, she's at the grassroots, she sees everyday New Zealanders all the time and she's treated with respect and, um, and I think that's really important that, that, uh, that she's there. It's taken guts for Sarah to stand up and tell her story, but it's all about being accepted, she says, no need to hide anymore. So you are who you were meant to be now? Yes, I am. And how satisfying is that? Um, I have a, a great sense of internal peace. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't wake up in the morning and question who I am. I know who I am. Um, and I go about, my, um, I go about my, my business, I go about my life. Um, without uh, questioning my identity every minute of the day. Now, Sarah wants it known there is support out there for people dealing with gender dysphoria. We'll post a link to the Transsexual Support Group Agenda on our website. There's the address. Later on Sunday, boot camp for boy racers. When I want to be boy racer, it's one hand on the steering wheel, one hand on the handbrake. It's always on the handbrake. But next, an issue haunting America this week. A man's home is his castle, but can he defend it to the death? When I came around the corner, I saw the silhouette in my window. I pointed my weapon, and I fired three times. 